Hello, I'm Ivan Gruel, Chief Investment Officer with Avantax. Today we'll provide a market update for April. We'll start with a recap of returns through the first quarter and then shift to a discussion on the banking turmoil, the economic impacts, and finally we'll take a look at current valuations. Volatility continued in March, full of ups and downs for both stocks and bonds. After experiencing a sharp sell-off in the first half of March, the S&P 500 finished the month strong, leaving the index higher by 7.5% year-to-date. Meanwhile, the technology-heavy NASDAQ Composite Index recorded its best quarter since 2020, up more than 16%. Overseas, the MSCI Acqui XUS Index, the international index, climbed about 7% during the quarter, and the MSCI EM, the Emerging Markets Index, was higher by about 4%. In bonds, the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Bond Index, in orange, is higher by nearly 3% in total return as lower interest rates pushed bond prices higher. Breaking down the market returns by sector, markets were led by mega cap tech stocks, up more than 21% so far this year, while unsurprisingly, financials lagged with a minus 5.6% return for the quarter. In the first quarter of 2023, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and several other regional banks sparked concerns regarding the health of the U.S. banking system. In swift response, the U.S. government stepped in, with the FDIC backstopping all depositors. In addition, the Federal Reserve took decisive action to prevent the situation from spreading to other banks, creating a new bank term funding program. In aggregate, the policy response was enough to calm fears of another financial crisis. While these events are significant, we believe they were isolated and company-specific, caused by poor management decisions and the absence of adequate risk controls. As this chart shows, bank capitalization overall still looks very healthy and has improved significantly since 2008, with stricter bank regulations and capitalization requirements following the global financial crisis. We believe, however, that the regional banking crisis will likely have negative implications for the U.S. economy. Lending conditions have tightened meaningfully since the second quarter of 2022, and we expect they will tighten further, negatively affecting growth by reducing capital available for business spending and investment. Entering the second quarter of 2023, financial distress from regional bank turmoil has created new stress for the U.S. economy and increased the risk of recession later this year. This banking system turmoil has underscored the weakness of an economy facing a rapid rise in interest rates in a very short period of time. Following positive growth for the first quarter of 2023, expected to be in the 2% range, the economy is likely to see weak real GDP growth for the remainder of the year, with an increased chance of a recession by the end of the year. Higher inflation and less fiscal stimulus continue to weigh on consumer spending, with the personal savings rate now averaging 4.7%, compared to a long-run average of 8.9%. In addition, businesses may slow hiring and capital spending plans due to increased recession worries. We are likely to see a further tightening of bank lending conditions as banks focus on the quality of their balance sheets rather than on growth, dragging on overall economic growth. On the brighter side, the economy has proved resilient in light of the Fed's aggressive rate hiking cycle. Inflation is slowing, with headline CPI inflation increasing 6% last month, down from a peak of 9.1% last June. In addition, the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, the core PCE index, has been steadily decreasing and is now at an annualized rate of 4.6%. As this chart shows, variables tracked by the National Bureau of Economic Research, such as spending and labor indicators, are holding up in the current environment. Recent unemployment rate and job openings figures continue to signal strength in the labor market and consumer spending, which accounts for more than two-thirds of U.S. economic activity, increased 0.2% in February. So continuing strength in the labor market paired with a resilient consumer should bode well for growth going forward and could be enough to keep the economy out of a recession in the coming months. Finally, we revisit a slide that shows current valuations and opportunities in the markets. While both stocks and bond returns have improved this quarter, the current investment landscape still looks attractive. 
This slide shows 10 major asset classes and their valuations expressed as Z-scores or relative richness or cheapness to their respective history. The green diamonds show valuations as of the end of 2021 and the circles are current valuations. Asset classes across the board are much cheaper today compared to the end of 2021. For example, fixed income still looks attractive as treasuries, core bonds, and municipal bonds remain cheap to their average valuation levels, along with international stocks. Taking these valuations into consideration as investors position for the remainder of the year and beyond, it's important to include diversified asset allocation that positions toward the opportunities poised to drive long run returns. So that is what we have for this month. Thank you for watching and have a great day.